Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. For premium content, dwyer70905.substack.com. Let's talk about some pending bets I have on the board. I'm just going to run through a list um, on the eve of the NFL season, right? And some boxing picks. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First week of the NFL. I'm just going to list some of the picks I have. I might add some more before the start of the season. I might retract these picks if injury news, uh, holdouts, um, COVID, some other information uh, comes out that's not available today. Again, today is August the 31st, 2021. Week one of the NFL, I like the Denver Broncos on the road laying two and a half points against the New York Giants, right? I think Denver's defense is underrated. I think the secondary is loaded. Teddy Bridgewater has an excellent record against the spread. Uh, he's the kind of guy who can handle road games. I like Denver laying two and a half over the Giants. Next, on the road in Buffalo, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I believe they're going to be one of the stories of this year, right? I like their rookie running back. If you look at Ben's touchdown interception ratio, it was on par with Justin Herbert's last year. Of course, the Steelers made the playoffs last year. Of course, Tomlin, as Steeler head coach, has never had a losing record. And of course, the Steelers have an elite defense. The Steelers getting six and a half points here. That's too many points. I understand there's a lot of optimism in Buffalo, but the line's just too big. I like the Steelers getting six and a half points on the road in Buffalo's home opener. Next, you know, Mac Jones might be a ringer. Apparently outside of football season, Nick Saban is very good friends with Bill Belichick. Right, Belichick might have gotten the steal of the draft, right? In an era where Tom Brady is the reigning Super Bowl winner and, of course, has won six other Super Bowls, right? We seem to have gotten away from the fact that arm strength and that athleticism isn't always what makes a great quarterback. Right now, Mac Jones has a believer in Nick Saban. Mac Jones was a Heisman Trophy candidate last year in college. Mac Jones, with a functional veteran QB, hardworking QB on the roster, on a team that spent a lot of money in the offseason. In other words, they're going for it this year. Right? Belichick doesn't want Tom Brady to get all the glory. Right? On that team, Mac Jones wins the starting job. Right? So I'm keeping an eye on Mac Jones. Um, I know he's not favored to win Rookie of the Year. I believe he should be. Because let's face it. The Jacksonville Jaguars don't have a lot of talent. You know Trevor Lawrence is going to finish the season under 500. As good as Urban Meyer is as a coach, he's unproven, completely unproven, as an NFL head coach. Meanwhile, Belichick is sitting there with a loaded roster, right, having saved all the money in dealing with his quarterbacks. Mac Jones is under a rookie salary cap. They even blew out Brian Hoyer. It's him and Jared Stidham right now. Right? So all that money that some teams are paying their quarterbacks. Think about the Dallas Cowboys. Think about them paying Dak Prescott $40 million. Right? All that money 
the Patriots were able to spend on free agents, defense, offense. Folks, I think they've circled this game. Brian Flores, head coach of the Dolphins, has already beaten the Patriots as head coach of the Dolphins. Right? Brian Flores, of course, is a Bill Belichick protege. Used to be on Bill Belichick's staff. I think both teams are going to throw a lot at each other. I like the under. It's a low over-under, but I like the under 44 points. As good as Mac Jones is, I think he's going to face some interesting defensive schemes. And I'm sure Belichick doesn't want to start the year, doesn't want to start the Mac Jones era 0-1. So I believe he's going to throw a lot of defensive schemes at former Alabama quarterback Tua. So I'm expecting both quarterbacks to make mistakes. The game is in New England. I like the under 44 points. Next. You know, Denver has an elite defense. An elite defense. You know, Teddy Bridgewater, I know he had a bad year last year. He claims he was hurt at, you know, toward the end of the year, and it cost him statistically. But what I want people to do is to look at Teddy Bridgewater's stats before last year. They're pretty good. Now, the way I play futures is I just want to have teams that have a shot to be in playoff contention week 16 and 17. That gives me an opportunity to start to hedge. And I want to get at least 25 to 1 on the long shot teams. I do consider Denver to be a long shot team. But at 33 to 1 to win the Super Bowl with this defense and this secondary, and with guys like Jerry Judy, who Bridgewater can pass the ball to. I've added Denver to my futures portfolio. Denver, 33 to 1 to win it all. Right? My game plan is to be able to hedge in late December. Let's talk about some other bets. You know, I understand that they've increase the number of games to 17 games. Okay, I get it. Regular season win total. Somebody here is going to have to explain to me in the comment section how Vegas thinks a proper over-under number for the Baltimore Ravens is 11 wins. I don't. I think Cleveland is going to be tough. I think the Steelers are going to be tough. Folks, that's four games that the Ravens have to play, right? I still have my doubts on Lamar Jackson's ability to hit wide receivers, right? I'm tired of looking at their box score and seeing a lot of catches by the tight ends. I know the Baltimore Ravens have a pretty good defense. I understand they've had success. I know they have a very long winning streak in the preseason. Understand to win this bet, with an over-under number of 11, the Ravens would have to go 12-5. and five. I'm not buying it. I like the under-11 wins for the Baltimore Ravens. Next, 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. The over-under number for the Denver Broncos this year is 8.5 wins. I think Bridgewater is a winning quarterback. Look at him with the New Orleans Saints a few years ago. I think this defense is well above average, right? I like the Denver Broncos over eight and a half wins. Next, let's move to boxing. You know, I made a video here where I pointed out that I looked at MMA matches involving Victor Belfort. And he didn't seem to have a great chin to me. Right? He just didn't. Now, I'm a little bit shocked that in a boxing match against Oscar De La Hoya, right, Hall of Fame boxer, 
that the odds on De La Hoya are so low. I was expecting De La Hoya to be very expensive. Instead, at the time I made my pre-fight video, he was a minus 200. Believe it or not, money has come in on Belfort. De La Hoya is now a minus 180. Understand, too, this fight is now under the auspices of the California State Boxing Commission. California has very stringent rules. I know Belford had a therapeutic use exemption sometime in the past. Uh, folks, if he's under the auspices of the California State Boxing Commission, trust me, there's going to be high scrutiny of the drug testing. Also, De La Hoya looks like he's in great shape. Right? De La Hoya looks like he's taken this fight seriously. In fact, he's talking about further fights after this fight. I like Oscar De La Hoya. I've been able to get him at both a minus 200 and, depending on the day, a minus 180. I believe that's a great bet, even though... I myself believe De La Hoya lived a little bit too fast when he was a fighter, right? De La Hoya doesn't strike me as one of these guys who keeps himself in shape all the time, right? But I think casual fans have forgotten that this guy's a great fighter. And you mean to tell me he's fighting a guy who, I believe Belford has one round of professional boxing in his entire career, right? I'm expecting De La Hoya to dominate. I'll be surprised if De La Hoya doesn't get the knockout here. Understand, De La Hoya has a very heavy left hand. De La Hoya is also a master boxer. I believe Belford only has a puncher's chance this is a casino mispricing, in my opinion. I'm expecting De La Hoya to win the fight. So those are the bets I currently have on my plate, at least some of them. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section of this video. Right, I like Denver, minus 2.5. The Steelers, plus 6.5. The under 44 points in the Dolphin Patriot game. The Denver Broncos at 33-1. to to win the whole thing. They're just in addition to a NFL futures portfolio. The under 11 wins for the Baltimore Ravens. The over 8.5 wins for the Denver Broncos. All they have to do, folks, is go 9-8 and eight and I'm good. Right? Then, of course, Oscar De La Hoya over Victor Belford. The odds currently being offered are a minus 180, and a minus 200. It was a minus 200 a few days ago, then it dropped to a minus 180. I don't think this fight is going to be competitive. Belford, let's remember, is 44 years old. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.